Back in the fall of 2022, when the new versions of Lightroom Classic and Photoshop Camera Raw came out, the portrait masking was the big talk where you could select the portrait and all the facial features that are, went along with it. Great tools, but there's another masking tool in there that I think no matter what kind of photographer you are, is probably one of the most powerful masking tools that we have. I wanna take a look at it a little bit more in depth here. So let's jump in. So we're inside of Lightroom. I'm gonna to go to the masking tools over here on the top right. Just so you know, if you're using Photoshop, it works exactly the same if you're in Photoshop's Camera Raw. So whether you opened up a raw file, or whether you went to the Camera Raw filter menu, you would go to your masking tool. Once you're at that masking tool, the, ob the, the tool that I'm gonna be talking about is called the Object Selection Tool. So you'll see it right over there. And then again, you'll see it right over here when we decide to add a new mask inside of Lightroom Classic. So the Object Selection Tool is almost the catch off for all of the other options inside of there. Cause when we go to create a new mask, I already have some masks on here. So we're not going to see the icons that we would normally see. But when I go to create a new mask, we've got a lot of different options, select subject, sky, background, people, um, brushes, linear, but there's nothing that really, you know, other than a brush to get just a specific part of the photo and we would have to manually brush it. So for example, if I wanted to make this wall over here a little bit brighter, I would normally have to take the brush and go in there and try to mask the edge and try to make it perfect. Or I can go to the object selection tool. And the way this tool works is you get two options. You get the first option, which is a brush and you can control its size. And then you get a second option, which is basically you're gonna lasso something. We'll talk about that in just a minute here. But with the brush, you can hit the right and left bracket key to make it larger or smaller. And what I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm not even gonna worry about being perfect. I'm just gonna draw along the left edge here draw it down, draw across in there, and then just come and fill in the area. You don't even always have to fill in the area. It's going to be one of those things for a little bit of trial and error on your part. Some photos need it, some photos don't. You can never really go wrong by doing it, but we'll go in there and just lasso or just brush around that. And you'll see it does a nice job, especially on the edge over here. Of course, at the bottom there, it's not going to be perfect because there is no perfect edge to it. And then you still always have all of your add and subtract options for this. So I could subtract from it with a brush, make sure that brush is kind of a big feathered brush, make sure that feather is set to 100% and almost you know feather that edge down there. Okay, that'll help it mix in better. And then of course, you know, it can go and make whatever change. If I wanted to make that area brighter, if I wanted to uh, add a little bit of warmth to it, make it maybe not quite as bright as it was, but now I've got a really good, easy way of just working on specific parts of the photo without brushing painstakingly over something. So I can go object selection again. And here in this example, let's just see, I, I don't know what it'll do with this rock, but let's just see, yeah, it does actually a pretty good job. All right, I'll undo that one and let's try it again on maybe this rock here. Should do a pretty good job. You can see that, okay? So that's one example. Let's go take a look at another one here. So this is one where I haven't added any masks to it. And what I'll do is click on object selection. And this time, rather than doing the brush option, I'm gonna do this little rectangular selecting option here. I think of it more of a lasso. And what I would do is just lasso around the object. And it'll do a really good job of selecting it. Now, a lot of people will say, well, what about select subject? Would select subject select it? Select subject would probably, and it did, just select the bird in this case, okay? So if I wanted uh, what the bird is sitting on here, then I would have to use another tool for that. So again, I could brush it and it's got a masking option, so it's not out of the question, but this is just a lot easier and a lot faster. As I said before, don't forget, you've got your add and subtract with this. So what about if I wanted the bird as well? Well, I could click on add and then I could click select subject. And now that's gonna add that into the mask as well. So now I've got, can make that whole thing lighter or, bark, or darker, okay? And then the, uh, the flip side of this is once I have all that selected, now I could always go click on the little pop-out menu and do duplicate and invert mask. And now I've got the background selected in there as well. So there's a lot of power in all this stuff. Okay, let's move on to the next one because I think there's a really good tip that you're gonna like to see with what we can do. If I wanted to maybe select this tree, but avoid the sky. However, um, this is a perfect time for a very, very quick 45, 60 second word from our sponsor. I promise I'll keep it fast and I think you'll like this. Lightroom, when they added all these masking capabilities, they did something pretty revolutionary with adaptive presets. 
What I mean by that is I can, I can make a preset based on the sky and the foreground and the people in my photo. And I can set all the settings the way that I think work, which I have done. And then I can give that preset to you. You can apply it to your photo and it won't use my masks. It'll make the masks based on your photo, which is pretty cool. It's pretty big stuff when you think about how adaptive a preset can now be. So I've got two different packs, one that's more landscape, wildlife, nature related, and another one that's more portrait related. So I invite you to check both of them out. Um, they've got not only videos on how to use and install them, but really how to dig down in and get the most out of those types of presets. Let's get back to the tutorial. We had left off where I was going to try to select the top of this tree here. So I can go over here to my object selection and uh, let's switch over to the brush and I'll just go and just kind of scribble around. Again, don't have to be perfect. All right, just try to get most of it. And that looks pretty good. Let's just fill in a couple areas. Again, I, it's a little bit of trial and error whether you actually have to fill it all in. A lot of times it will fill it in automatically for you. So in this case, didn't do that great of a job. And if you wanted to see it, what you could do is go to the bottom of your mask panel, click on that little pop out menu and choose white on black. All right, and that way you could see it a lot better and you can see the edges aren't, aren't great and it's actually not taking care of a lot of the sky that we saw in there. It's actually including that in part of the selection. But again, you gotta start thinking how Lightroom thinks with these tools because there's so much power in a lot of our adding and subtracting if you can just be a little bit creative with it. So in this case, what, what part of this selection don't I like? It actually did a pretty good job on the edges. It's just including the blue sky. So I could go to subtract, select sky. So it's gonna basically take the select sky, whatever that would be, and subtract it from the photo. So I can go to subtract, select sky, and that will do a really nice job of getting rid of most of that blue inside of those trees. Not always gonna be perfect, but does, I think, a good job more times than not. So now if I were to go take a look at that mask a different way, you can see it's a lot more precise than it was the first time. And now I have access to that tree if I wanted to make it brighter darker, more colorful, etc. Now working with portraits, same idea. We could do select subject and select subject will work a lot of the time. And it did a pretty good job in this example, but now let's work a little bit reverse, right? With, we were using the object selection and whenever I had a portrait, I mean, I would probably just go to select subject first. It didn't do part of the dress down here. So now you could add to it with the object selection and then take your brush, hit the right bracket key, make that brush a little bit bigger, just makes it easier to, uh, to not have to paint everywhere and go through there and add that in. And you can see it brought in the bottom part of the, the dress down there. There's really no way we've got the, between the railing and everything in there, you're probably not gonna get a great selection of everything in there. But as far as the overall subject, this actually did, I think a really good job. And then moving on down the line, this one, I would go down to maybe this one. Instead of using the brush, I would probably just take that rectangle. And just to show you, it, it's, it's, it, you can go well beyond the boundaries of what you want to select. So there's a lot of area that I'm trying to select here. And when I change this mask from the red overlay to the black and white, you're gonna see it didn't select all the stuff that I had in there. It just selected it and pretty much just knew the area that I wanted. All right, so let's that back to color overlay. And if I wanted to make that brighter or darker, again, that's a difficult selection. You're never gonna get perfection out of anything with it. Just keep in mind, but I did wanna show you just how wide of an area I can make with that object selection. And it still pretty much knows what I want to work on here. Landscape photos, there's a lot of times where I wanna edit a specific area. So I can go to object selection. And in this case, maybe I'll switch back over here to the brush and then just brush. Maybe I just want to, you know, add a little bit of light, a little bit of extra color to the top of the rocks over there. So did a nice job of selecting it. You can see it left the trees alone and just selected inside of there. You do have add and subtract. So you could subtract with a brush and with a really feathered brush if you wanted to, and you'll start to feather that out a little bit. Or another thing that I do a lot of times, I subtract with a linear gradient and I'll just drag up. All right, and yeah, I can even move that up a little, there you go. So you can see I can really feather that adjustment so it's not gonna be so harsh where the rocks meet the trees over there. Now I can make that a little bit brighter if I wanted to, I can make it a little bit warmer, just gives the 
appearance that there's a little bit more light on it. As I said earlier, I think it's one of the most powerful masking tools we have in Photoshop. I don't think it gets used enough. So uh, I also have another free video right here for you. It's a good one to go to next. Earlier, I talked about an adaptive preset. And if you're not quite clear on that concept, this video will explain what an adaptive preset is, why it's so important, um, and why that technology, it even show you how you can make your own ones in there. So if you're looking for a video to watch next, that's a really good place to go.